I'm so glad that you guys are here today. Sorry, I don't have a whole lot of voice for some reason. But I want today, I want tonight's prophetic night to be different than it's ever been. I don't want, I don't want it to be the, the same that it's been. I don't want this to be last year's presbytery or prophetic service. I don't want it to be the year before that. I don't want the words that were from last year to be this year's words. I want this to be a fresh one, one that we've never experienced before, but it's gonna take us ready. It's gonna, it's gonna take us uh, uh, being in a, a posture of readiness for what the Lord has for us. Because you know, words can actually be the same, but they can, be, they can mean different things for us in different seasons of our life. So whatever season that you're in today, I hope that you're ready to receive. You know, that we're gonna have some people up here for sure. But these words that are spoken over some of these people that are on platform here are the same words that are for you too. And so if, if you feel a burden, if you feel a heaviness, if you, you feel something that is inside of you when, when they begin to, to speak these words, it's okay for you to take those for yourself too. It's okay to receive that. You know what, that word is for me. This is the season that I, I'm in. This is the encouragement that I need. This is what, what I need for right now. And this is the rhema word that I was talking about even this morning, that the Lord begins to reveal some things to us even when other people are speaking. And I believe that he wants to reveal something about himself to you today. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to receive today? Aren't you guys go ahead and take a seat. I'm so glad that you guys are here. And here, here's, what, uh, here's what tonight is. We call it prophetic night. Sometimes we call it prophetic presbytery night. And there's nothing weird about it. There's, there's, it's, this is something that's absolutely all throughout scripture. And really what it is and what it, what it talks about in, in 1 Corinthians 14, it, it, this is about the building of the church. It's about the encouragement of the church, the comfort, the building up, the strengthening of the church. And, and so I, I want you today to be strengthened. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not sitting in that one. That's for one of you guys. <laughs> so how we do this is that we ask some people uh, that, uh, that aren't from here, that don't know the candidates. And this is what's really cool is that we give them couple A, couple B, couple, couple C. They don't know your name. They didn't Facebook stalk anybody or anything like that. They, they just were given an A, a B, or a C, and they just begin to start praying for these, these couples that are right here. And just begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want to tell us that they need to hear? And this is what's really special. I've been through this a few times, and every single time the Lord reveals something new, but at the same time, he just confirms something that he's already spoken in my own life. Something that I've already been hearing from the Lord, and this is confirming to what the Lord is already saying. And so uh, what you're going to, what you're going to hear is, is some people just, and they have stuff that's already written down. So it's not, it's not that they eyeball you and they're like, oh, you look like, you might be like this. They're hearing from the Lord. And we do this in pairs because I think there's safety in, in as a team to be able to, to, to do this. And, and what's really cool is that when we get done with this part, uh, they're going to go throughout the room, too, and give some words to you guys. And this is really where it gets fun because it's really, uh, it, it's, it's something that I'm always expecting. And it's always the least, you know, the least likely people that get a word. And it's really, really cool to see the Lord just rock their world. And so uh, are you guys ready for this? How many, of, let me just ask you, how many is this your first time to be at something like this? Raise your hand. Okay, that's awesome. Love it. So that you're among family here, and this is what, what I told our presbyters. I said, this is, this is a family service. This is, this is truly what, what it looks like. You know, we get, begin to share some things. And what, what, what family does, we just speak life into each other. And this is what they're going to do. They're going to encourage you. You guys are going to be encouraged. There's probably going to be some tears. There's probably going to be some tears in there too, which is going to be really, really great. 
There's something cleansing about crying, isn't there? There's something awesome about that. And so I'm going to invite our first uh, couple, couple A, right? And I'm going to invite our presbyters to come up and our elders to come up too. And so here's what, what happens. They're going to get a word and then the elders of the church, we're going to lay hands on each one of, of the couples that are here. And this is just to seal the deal. We pray over them, affirm them, confirm what they're hearing from the Lord, and we just pray over them. And so every time we do this, we'll do this with each couple. I'm just going to ask you to be in prayer for them too. And so just, uh, just be expectant for something great today. Hello, y'all. It's so good. Look at us. I know. Look at this. This is great. This is great. My name is Bethany. I'm so, so thankful to be here with y'all tonight. I'm thankful. I mean, just thankful in general, but just thankful because my plane was two and a half hours behind schedule today. And so I like whizzed in here from Dallas, um, flying in from Arkansas. But it's such, such a pleasure and an honor to be with y'all tonight. So, Cody and Katie, we got your names right before we walked out. Um, you've been C and K, couple number one, um, to me up until now. So it's really good to put get some names and then put some faces with it. Are you nervous a little bit? Have you have you been? Do you call them candidates? What do you call it? Like, okay, have you been in this in these chairs before? Oh, it's awesome. So I'm assuming you're recording this and it'll be transcribed, all of that. So right now it's like deer in a headlight and it's like glazed over and you'll sit down and be like, I know they said something and there was something that hit this. So we'll go back over it later with you. So Cody, uh, the first things that I wrote down was administration, systems, and integrity. You are an amazing listener that enables you to gather and retain information. You can hear and mentally organize your thoughts. It creates clarity, and there's an ordering and a grouping. Like I literally see you taking in information. It's like, okay, that goes there. That goes there. Like as you're listening, it's not later. It's in the moment, in the process. You're slow to speak, and you allow others to unload and get into a place where they are able to process and listen themselves. You ask great questions that lead others to find their own solutions. You have great discernment and wisdom that allows you to see steps ahead. Even in conversations, you ask for more words of knowledge. That's what I hear God saying. Cody, ask me for more words of knowledge. Knowledge that goes beyond what you can naturally surmise and pick up on. You have very welcoming arms. I said you are a gatherer that creates safe spaces to be real, to be transparent, and to be vulnerable. You don't like fake. You don't have any time for it. There's wise counsel in your lips. You have an ability to bring calmness in chaos, clarity in crisis. I I, I love this phrase. I heard heaven rationality in earthly hysteria. A heaven rationality in the midst of earthly hysteria. Colossians 3.1 in the New Living, I love it. It says, set your sights on the realities of heaven. That's where you live. You, you can see, I know, I know it looks like this, but the reality of heaven is this. And you bring that in. I see you working with new believers and or those who have never been discipled in a personal way to understand who they are in Christ. You are a discipler and an equipper. And then I'm just going to put this phrase out. But God says, you are a good son, a really good son. Okay, 
I'll just sit with that one for a minute. Katie, I heard there is royalty in the house. You delight in creating spaces for others to feast on all of the kingdom's resources. You set tables where anyone can find a seat. You have a heart for the forgotten, and you want to make a seat at the table for them. You don't fear lack because you have learned to depend and lean on the unlimited resources of your father. I see a strong gift of leadership and oversight. Your enjoyment and fulfillment and ease will come as you continue growing in the wisdom of what to take on and what to let go. I didn't say easy. I said an ease, even in the midst of the hard things. I also see God wanting to help you let go of things having to exceed expectations. <laughs> and at first I thought perfection, you're not a perfectionist. It's not that necessarily. It's like somebody say, hey, uh, Katie, can you do this? And you're like, yeah. And then you're like, okay, but I want to do it even better than what they expected me to do it. So not perfectionism, but letting that go a little bit, because I think it's put some pressure on you that's not coming from the Lord. Those you lead will be released into greater freedom when they see your ability to push past your own failures, almost embracing them. It's really hard. Um, it's not a pride thing. But you just really don't like to mess up <laughs> at all. I mean, none of us do. But for some of us, it's almost a fear thing. It's almost it goes into who we are, like who, our identity. And God's saying, you need to start embracing those. And what it's going to do is allow others to experience a freedom and to be able to just try things. The grace that you receive for yourself will become the gift of grace for others that they can then pass on to even more people. It's a chain reaction, sis. I see freedom from the fear of failure will produce a willingness to dare and trust God for more. It's an invitation to dive deeper into the imagination of our creative God and reflect that same quality as his image bearer. As a queen, you set the stage for others to join in. You provide them with what they need to succeed and to thrive. The losses that you have endured, the dark days of isolation, the testimony of God's faithfulness has enabled you to model forgiveness, healing, restoration, and hope. Amen. My name is uh, Ed Ivey, and this is my third time with the High Ridge Church um, here in, in Texas, and first time at this campus, so what an honor to be here. And for CK, that's what I got on paper. I just got CK. And this wasn't spiritual, but I just thought Calvin Klein, but anyway, nothing. Anyway, Cody and uh, Katie, you know, the Lord showed me and gave me these words first over you, that you're a life-giving couple. That in a world where families and marriages are asphyxiating and they're struggling, God is raising you up. God is raising you up with a voice. There is marriage ministry that is stirring on the inside of you. There's parenting ministry that God is beginning to um, speak to you about. Cody, I saw this over your life that I heard you when you were young saying, Lord, you can have it all at a young age. And you even remember that moment where you just said, God, you can have it all. You can take everything. And I saw that you walked through a, a season of brokenness. And there was a time where you were ready to give up. You were ready to quit. You were ready to walk away. There's, there's some struggles that you've walked through that Katie doesn't even know about. Some things that have almost, you felt like, man, this, this is going to take me out. But you didn't give up. You kept walking, 
you kept moving. You didn't think you would be able to make it, but here you are. And I just, I heard the Lord say, he's still standing. There's a faithfulness, Cody, that you walk in, a stability. There's a saying that I heard years ago that that the Lord impressed on me that says, those who God uses mightily, he wounds deeply. And God's going to use your life in a mighty, mighty way. God says that he can trust you, that you're a mighty man of God. There's a teaching gift that you have. And I saw a message that just like um, Bethany was saying, there's, there's a discipleship ministry that, 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 that I see you calling a generation, calling them back to the basics. I don't know if you're a football guy, if you like football, you're a football guy. You, you, know, you probably heard the story years ago, Vince Lombardi, when he was coaching the Green Bay Packers. You know, I mean, they were terrible. He had just taken the team on, and after one of the practices, he just called them all back together, and he held up a football and he said, okay, let's start from the very, very beginning. This is a football. And I see you sitting with a group of men. I see you sitting with a group of young people and looking at them and saying, this is the word. <laughs> We're going to start at the very beginning. Let's go back to the basics. There's a pastoral gift that you have on your life. There's a strong pastoral gift, and, and, and you may not recognize it in that way or see it in that capacity, but there's, there's, a, there's, there's a desire that God has placed in you to shepherd others. You're a very gifted man. You're incredibly gifted. And Katie, I, I saw this over you, that you have a gift of encouragement and that you're a worshiper. I also saw you, the, the Lord gave me these words that you're gonna be a mother to many. And it's almost the, the image that I got in my mind was like of a mother hen with her little chicks. You know, like you were, you were walking, but you know, they were trying to go in different directions, but I saw you just kind of putting your arms around them and kind of walking around with them. But, but God has called you to be a mother to the many. And there is a, a, a cross-generational anointing that you have on your life as well. God has given you the ability to speak into multiple people's lives at different ages and different stages. There's a wisdom that you have that you walk in. I hear you calling this generation, and I hear these words coming out of your mouth. You can do it. You can make it. There's an encouragement that you walk in. You know, the enemy of encouragement is discouragement. And I saw that, that there's been a season that you've been in where where you've felt some discouragement. And it wasn't even one specific thing that happened or took place. It was just all of a sudden, you just felt kind of like a weight that came over you. And I just want to tell you that that's the enemy. That the enemy has brought that discouragement, and the reason he's brought that to you is because he sees your potential. He sees what God has called you to. And so I want to tell you here tonight that God is breaking that discouragement off of your life. That even when you get up, in Jesus' name, when you get up and you walk back down those stairs, the discouragement is going to be gone. It's being broken off of you right now in this moment. You're going to sleep better tonight than you've slept in a really long time. It's going to, you're going to wake up tomorrow and it's just going to be a, you're just going to feel a life. You're going to feel a vitality. And the Lord also showed me that you're a cheerleader. You cheer on the dreams of others. And you, you're a really good cheerleader, man. You just, you, you rah-rah about everybody else. But at times you've wondered and you've said to yourself, but God, what about my dreams? God, what about the things that you've put in my heart? And there are even some things that have happened and, and you've just said, you know what? That was a dream that I felt like God gave me that I'm just gonna let go. There's some dreams that have died. And I just want to come along to encourage you. I hear the Lord saying, I'm resurrecting those dreams. He's a God of resurrection. That's what he does. And he's resurrecting some dreams in your life. And over both of you, I just, uh, uh, the Lord showed me that you're in a season of rerouting. That there's a season where there's kind of, you know how the GPS does. I mean, it just can reroute you at times. And I saw it almost, it was like you were being rerouted and you're in the middle of being rerouted. And you didn't know what the next step was. And it was bringing a little bit of kind of anxiety and some fear about your future. And I just heard the Lord say, you can trust me with your future. You can trust me with your future. You can trust me with the next couple of years. There will be some big decisions that you'll have to make in the next two years. But the Lord says, you can trust me. And I'm going to give you everything that you need to accomplish what I've called you to do. All right. God bless you guys. (laughs) 
So I, I heard a lot of great things. Um, I think he was pretty much spot on with every, or both of y'all spot on with things that you're talking about, Cody. He's uh, methodical. Uh, we've had many deep conversations just about the Word of God, how to rightly divide the Word of God, and and uh, this is truly his heart, discipling people. It's in him. The encouragement that uh, that I heard about you and just your season. Um, I want to fan that flame in you because the Lord is beginning to stir something in you that is kind of, two years. That's, I heard two years, something big is coming. And so I want to affirm that in you guys. I don't know what that looks like, but I want to be on the ride with you in the next two years. All right. Will y'all pray with us? Father, we thank you for Cody and Katie. We thank you for just the mantle that you've placed on them. And Lord, we just submit all of these words to you, Lord, that, uh, that none of these words will return void, Father, that, that uh, these will fall on fertile, fertile ground. So Father, we just, we worship you today. We say yes and amen to your promises that we heard. We say yes to, to these words of knowledge and words of wisdom that we heard, the encouragement that we heard today. And so, Lord, the, the flame that has begun, maybe even tonight, Lord, I pray that you begin to stir that within them, that you, that you just make it into a, a blaze uh, for your glory. And so thank you, Lord. Thank you for the encouragement that we heard today. Thank you for, for uh, just all that you're doing in this sweet couple, Lord. They mean so much to this house. And Lord, I see so much more coming. So Father, we just say yes and amen to everything that we heard tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Can we give them a hand this All right, Gilcrease, are you guys ready? Y'all give a hand for Luke and Jane. Luke, I heard that you've been counted out more than once. Most men would have called it quits. There have been enough circumstances, enough blows, enough disappointments, enough hurts to justify you walking away. But here you are. Here he is. <laughs> the secret to your perseverance and joy in the midst is that you have kept your eyes on Jesus. You have become his true apprentice. You've studied him to know what moved him, what ticked him off, what saddened him, what brought him joy, how he loved others, and most importantly, how he loved his father, and how he walked in the father's love for him. You love the church because he loved her. And like him, you are willing to give your life to it. Even when it lets you down, you have a grace to look past the ugliness and the less desirable because you see her, the church, as Christ sees her. I love in the Song of Songs, in the Passion Translation, the bride keeps saying, oh, but I'm, I'm dark and I'm, you know, I, I'm not pleasant to look at. I'm, she just kept giving all these reasons why she wasn't desirable. And then the bridegroom just keeps saying, and yet you are so lovely. And I see you saying that over the church. Everybody says, oh, this happened or that happened or did you see this? And you're like, and yet the church is so lovely. She is so lovely. You are a priest who reminds others of God's presence. And you bring him to their remembrance. You are an intercessor asking for God's patience and favor on the behalf of others. You are key to encouraging the vision of this house. To coming alongside when distractions come in. To help keep the focus. 
I see a beautiful ministry of reconciliation, leading others to humility and brokenness, forgiveness and restoration. God has gifted you to say the difficult truths because you do it in love. Others know it's not personal with you. The only agenda that you have is to lead them into freedom and purpose and to help them truly reflect their creator. Jane, I heard you are a joy infuser. You make the ordinary extraordinary. You have the ability to create new experiences that others wouldn't even dare to try. It's kind of like an exceptional chef at a really good fusion restaurant. Like takes two seemingly unrelated things and just puts it together and creates something amazing. It's made you daring and willing to say yes when God says, hey, let's try this. And it comes from a deep work on the foundational truths of your faith. You have developed a keen sense of what will work and what will connect. You know, when, when we, um, I love to cook, and my friends love it when I say I'm in a creative mood because they don't know what's coming. They just know it's going to be something they probably haven't had. I was, really, I was really relating to this a little bit. But I couldn't do that early on until I really could grasp the foundations of what kind of worked together and what didn't. I mean, you don't just do it recklessly. There's, that's what I'm trying to get at. You've got this basis and this foundation of your faith that now you can build on and say, okay, let's try some other things. God uses you to encourage others out of their predictable, bland diets of the word and the spirit. They've become stuck in their habits and their ruts, content with predictable and routine. That's just the way we've always done it. You really don't like it when people say that. <laughs> you appreciate the basics, but you see them as launch pads, as blocks to build from. Your mind is seldom at rest. You have the ability to work from both sides of your brain. You can create and then implement. Do it all. I see a wisdom deepening of how to communicate and encourage others with what God has put on your heart. How to give people the opportunity of joining you in the vision. To adopt it for themselves. There's a patience to allow others to walk their journey as you come alongside. I want to encourage you to ask God to help you recognize where people are at, to know what they're ready to receive. Your partnership with God will continue to develop in this way. There will be discernment to know when they're ready for that extra push or that extra nudge and to try something new. You guys can clap. That's a good place to clap right there. Okay. <laughs> Luke and Jane, I hear the Lord saying, you're right where you need to be. This is not a layover for you. You're in the right spot. You don't have to wonder about it. God, God has you in the perfect place. And he says, I have you in the palm of my hand. You, because you've wondered sometimes, is this just kind of a, a temporary place? Where, and God says, no, 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 I've, I've got you. I've got you right where, you, where I want you. You're, you're in the right place right now. Jane, I heard this over you, that there's a message of reconciliation that you have. You hate seeing people divided. We live in a world right now that is more divided than ever before. And some of that division has crept and found its way into the church body. And I see you as a reconciler. There, there's something unique about you because, right, you're, you're, you're a peacemaker, but you're not a pushover. You're tough but not calloused. And I see, I, I see people, I, this is, I'm, I'm just going to tell you kind of here, the way I kind of see it in my head, what the Lord showed me is there's, it's like people are losing their minds today. And I see you stepping on the scene and it's like, it's not like, okay, like everybody said, no, no, no. You step up like with a voice, an authoritative, I need everybody just to calm down. Like everybody stop it. 
right? There's, there's just an authority that you walk in. And God is giving you a voice to bring people together. God's giving you a voice. And there's a prophetic gift that you have. And God is, you sense it, you know it. The Lord is calling you to step out in it. And you don't even realize that it's already been happening because God's already been speaking through you. And there are moments where you're going to hear the lies of the enemy. And at the right moment, God's going to speak to you. And you're going to have the right word to expose the lies of the enemy. Jane, you also have a story. The Lord says she has a Cinderella story. Where you've been and where you are now, you're, you're two different people. God has done an amazing work in your life. And I hear the Lord saying this, tell your story. Tell your story. Write your story. Tell your story. There's a lot I want to say about that that I'm, I don't feel released right now to share, but, but tell your story. You've got an amazing story to tell. You felt in the past like you had limitations and restraints, but tonight the Lord's breaking those off of you. You're not going to experience those limitations anymore. There, there are new opportunities, new doors that are beginning to open for you. Luke, I heard this, that you're a man that runs towards danger. You know, um, a couple of weeks ago, the hurricane down in Florida happened, and uh, I work for one of the organizations I work with is called Convoy of Hope. And um, I, I have a picture that they sent out that showed this mass exodus of people evacuating in southwest Florida. And north on 75 in Florida was just jam-packed bumper to bumper. And then all of a sudden, you saw these five semis that said Convoy of Hope that were going the opposite direction. That's you. When everybody else is running from the danger, you run towards it. You go and you get in the middle of it. There's an urgency that you feel, and part of that is a gift of evangelism. And there's a boldness that God has given you. All of a sudden, there are new things. There are new things that are stirring up inside of your spirit. God is stirring that boldness, that day of Pentecost-type boldness for you to step up. The Lord showed me that you're going to be a modern-day revivalist that God's using you in a significant way. And God is going to shake this country and you're going to have a voice. There's a prophetic gift that you have. You are a prophetic couple. There's, there's a prophetic gifting that you walk in in your marriage. And I see that God is going to put you in places of influence. That he's going to sit you at the tables of important people. You're a strategic thinker that is always five steps ahead of everybody else. And God's going to use that. You've wrestled with your mission a little bit. Because you know what it is, you know, you know what, what God's called you to do, but you've wrestled with it a little bit and at times just even thought, well, God, I don't want to do this. And I hear the Lord just saying, settle into it. Settle into it and embrace it. And the last thing that the Lord showed me is, he said, he said tell Luke to dream bigger. There's some big things God has put in your heart. And I just hear him say, dream bigger. It's not big enough. It's not big enough. There's, there's something really unique and special about you guys. There's, there's a special anointing on your life together. And I'm just praying that God, even together, will continue to grow you. And you're going to step into the new opportunities, new opportunities and the new doors, and the, walking through the new doors that God has for you. God bless you. Okay. Wow. Um, let me... the word you gave you're right where you need to be it's actually the exact same word that I gave them a few months ago because it's something that they've wrestled with they moved from Fort Worth kind of okay is this what we're supposed to do it is what we're it is what we're supposed to do and I feel like sometimes you saying it, you are willing yourself into that right decision. But this is the Lord saying, no, it is the right decision. You being here is right where he wants you to be. Every, like literally everything that I heard from you, they're, they're in my group and I've heard their story and I know them and everything you said is like to the letter in my mind of who they are and what's going on with them. 
And I love y'all. Sorry, I'm getting a little verklempt here. <laughs> they're just special people. They're special. But they're not only just special to us here, they're special to the kingdom of God. The work that they've done, um, inner city work in Fort Worth, some, something you said about uh, maybe the le- lesser, I don't know, unfortunate people or whatever, that, that's them. That's where they've been ministering to people that, that nobody else wanted to minister to. That's them. That's their heart. The prophetic gift, yeah, I've seen that and I've heard it over and over again in our group. So let's just pray over them. Just seal this. Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you that it is, it is true. It is true. It is true. Father, today we seal it. Thank you. Thank you for speaking loudly and clearly. Thank you for affirming the questions I think that are maybe in Luke and Jane's mind tonight. Father, that you would truly set them on the mission that you have them to be on. Lord, that Luke would dream even bigger dreams. My goodness, he has such a great imagination. There are so many things I think that are on his mind. Lord, just blow his mind today expand his thought process, expand his imagination, Lord, that his dreams will not just be his dreams, but they would be your dreams. And Father, we just pray for the resources for all the dreams to come to fruition. We thank you for that. We know that when you speak something, when you say something, you're not gonna say it without just providing all the resources. So Father, I'm praying for that right now, that you would bring everything that you need that they need to, co- to complete and fulfill everything you're calling them to do. Thank you for what you're gonna do. Thank you for a, this new, a new day in the Gilcrease family. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. 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 Ribbles. Let's give them a hand. We got a hugs all around here. Are you already crying? No. Are you sure? Okay. This is awesome. It's just a dramatic pause. It's just. (laughs) We're messing with them. (laughs) Yeah. Curtis Curtis and Jesse, right? That dramatic pause is terrible, isn't it? It's like they have nothing for us. Nothing. There's just, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Curtis and Jesse, you're a next level couple. You are a next level couple. God is taking you. Not only are you next level, you, God is taking you to the next level. There, there, there are new things that are happening. I even saw there's a door right now that is beginning to crack open. And I'm telling you, behind that door is next level stuff for you guys. I mean, there, the, I, I just see the floodgate of opportunity getting ready to open up for you. And you've wondered at times, and you're like, when, when is it going to be our season? When is it going to be my time? When am I going to have my, when am I going to have, I mean, there, there is a floodgate that is getting ready to open. You know, for, for, every, for every new level, there's a new devil also. And there's going to be opposition. And there are going to be things that are going to try to distract you from what God has called you to do together. There is a togetherness that you guys have even in ministry. You know, sometimes in, in ministry, you'll have one guy that, you know, he's kind of the pastor. And then the, the, you guys walk in a togetherness in ministry. You, you do ministry together. That's important to you. Unity together, the family aspect of ministry. Curtis, I, the Lord showed me that you're a playmaker. Man, when the game is on the line, when it really matters, give Curtis the ball. Curtis can make it happen. You know, it's like Daniel you know, and with Daniel, you know the story of Daniel, but there's a specific story 
it, it was when Nebuchadnezzar, and I want you to go back and read this, but it was when Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he wanted all the wise people to interpret the dream. And they said, well, if you'll just tell us what the dream is, we'll interpret it. He said, no, 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 no. I, I want you to, first of all, tell me the dream, and then I want you to interpret it. And it's, they said, there, there's nobody that can do that. It, it seems completely impossible. And they, they said, there's this one guy, Daniel, that has that ability. Daniel came in and even Daniel said, hey, I don't have that ability, but here's what Daniel said. And this is the word that God gave me for you. There is a God in heaven who is the revealer of mysteries. You are a super smart guy. And it said that when Daniel spoke to Nebuchadnezzar, he spoke with, wis he spoke with wisdom and tact. When you speak, Curtis, you speak with wisdom and tact. You need to hear that tonight. You have a gift of wisdom. And I want that to sink in because the Lord really wants that to be impressed in your spirit. You have a gift of wisdom. You know what to do at the right moments, at the right times. And even when you don't know, there's a humility that you walk in to say, but there's a God in heaven. There's a God in heaven who is the revealer of mysteries. I saw you, Curtis, as a leader of leaders. That God is increasing your leadership and, and that there is a time right now where you're learning and leading, learning and leading, learning and leading. Those two things are kind of going hand in hand together. There's a lot that you're in, kind of taking in your heart and spirit and, and there are opportunities that you have to lead. But I saw that there is going to be a season where your leading will not just be leading, but it will be also investing. You're going to invest yourself into others. And I see a small group of men coming around your life and you investing yourself into them, almost like God's going to put some Elishas in, in your life. And they're going to model, and you're going to model, and they're going to practice what they've seen Curtis do because of the way that he's invested in their life. The Lord showed me that you're a servant leader that there's an authenticity. You know, when Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he, he, he showed the greatest servant leader practice that you ever could. And I remember sharing this years ago. When Jesus did that, he did three things. He was really communicating three things. He said, I don't have anything to prove, nothing to lose, and nothing to hide. That's the leadership that you walk in. I'm just Curtis. This is who I am. What you see is what you get. It's not in an arrogant way, but it's in, a, it's in humility. And I also saw this, that you love the church. And you love the church. All the mess of it sometimes, you love the church. Because you see the potential. God showed me that you're a protector of this house. I think it was Under Armour years ago that had that slogan, protect this house. That's Curtis. He protects the house. Jesse, Matthew chapter nine says that Jesus went through the towns and villages and preached in the synagogues and healing those with diseases and sicknesses. And it said that when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. The Lord gave me a picture of you driving around in the community sometimes. And there are just random moments that you'll see people or see groups or see things that just all of a sudden there's a compassion in your heart. You've even wept and cried in your car by yourself just because you've seen something that you've just been so moved with compassion. And you need to hear that's the heart of Jesus. You have the heart of Jesus. There's a gift of healing that you have, Jesse. I, I believe that God's gonna take us into a new season that as dark as things look right now, that there is breakthrough and there is revival coming. And I believe that there are gonna be signs and wonders and I see you laying your hands on sick people and I see them recovering and not just physically sick, but emotionally and mentally. I, God is gonna use you. There is a gift of healing that you have. You, you also have a heart for the underdog because in the past you felt like you were an underdog. I, I saw this, this homeless guy. I was in another city a couple weeks ago in, in South Carolina and I saw this homeless guy and I drove up and uh, when I got to the stoplight, I saw him stand at the stoplight and he took five steps to the left and he stopped and looked around and then he walked over and he took five steps to the right and he stopped and looked around for a couple of minutes and then he just got back to the light and I realized that he had nowhere to go. 
And I saw you intervening in the lives of people who have nowhere to go and helping them find direction and helping them find clarity and helping them find hope. Jesse, you truly are a freedom fighter. You fight for others that can't fight for themselves. The Lord also showed me that you have a heart for the nations. There's a missions heart inside of you. The, the mandate that Jesus gave to go into all of the world, you take that seriously. There's a big impact that you're gonna make. There's a big impact that you're gonna make that's significant. That's not just citywide, it'll be nationwide. It's gonna be significant. Over both of you, the Lord just showed me that you're in an Abraham place of life right now. If you remember when God called Abraham, he said, hey, Abraham, I want you to leave the land you know. There's a, there's a place right now where you've opened the door and you've just walked out into, into the unknown. And I just wanna tell you, God is out there in it. And you can trust him and to walk into the unknown and he's gonna lead you every step of the way in this new endeavor, endeavor that he's called you to. In Jesus' name, God bless you guys. That was good. That hit, didn't it? <laughs> Do you feel like you just read your mail? Like you got in your mailbox and opened it up? Mm. Curtis, I heard just worship. Like your heart to worship is so deep and so profound. Your life is led with thanksgiving and praise. You know how to enter his gates. You know how to get into his courts. But the depth has come because you just don't stay there. You get in, you make the sacrifices that need to be made. You give everything, you give your all, and you don't stop until you're in the holy of holies. You want to just live in his presence. It's what guides you. And it's like Moses, you know, in Exodus 33, I loved it when Moses is, God's saying, hey, I want you to lead these people. And it gets to the part of like, who's going? And he's saying, God, if you don't go with us, I don't, I mean, I don't even want to go. And what I love in Exodus 33, it says that if your presence does not go with us, he said, what else will distinguish us from all the other people on the earth? You don't want to just be like all the other people on the earth. You want that distinguishing mark on you, and you know that it's the presence of God. That's what separates you. That's what distinguishes you. I saw that you have had seasons where you said yes to a lot, many, many good things, good things, but you burned out. And joy wasn't strengthening you in those seasons. And then there's this resentment from the expectations that you were feeling. And it began to overshadow that true love that you have just, just serve. I see God releasing you from those expectations. Three things. Three things. Matthew 22, just... Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Ecclesiastes, just fear God. Keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. Micah 6, 8, act justly. Love mercy. Walk humbly. That's what he requires of you. That's it. That's it. Keep those as your personal goals, the means by which you measure your faithfulness to him. Let go of anything else that begins to weigh you down. And then just live in his presence. Follow only where he leads. I see a new season of rest and Sabbath for you. Not a lack of doing or a lack of it's but a rest in it and a Sabbath in it. I see a renewed understanding of working from that place of rest. You know, when you look at the days of creation, it says, and then it was evening and morning, and that was day one. It started with evening. When Adam was created in the evening, he woke up to Sabbath. Sabbath. He works for, worked from a place of rest. No more fear of burnout, bud. No more fear of burnout. 
your margins will become clearer, allowing you to focus on the most important relationships and to see them thrive. I see, study Jesus' rabbinic yoke. When he said, my yoke, each rabbi had a yoke that they taught their disciples and apprentice. They said, how do you follow God? How do you serve God? And Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Study that and how he led his disciples to follow him. Jesse, I heard that your time is coming soon, sis. What has seemed like a delay has just been a time of preparation. You have carried the dreams with faithfulness and with grace. Your years of waiting to do <laughs> have been counted just as valuable as if you had been actually doing what's on your heart. You have had the doing part down for quite some time. <laughs> and there's much that you could have done, I think, even in your own strength. God's just gifted you. God has, it, it's, some stuff just comes very easy to you. But God is much more delighted in your being, in your being with him, in this waiting. He has captured your heart, sis. He has honed in on your personal encounters. My husband calls them knee-to-knee -knee encounters. You know, they are what Jesus had the most of. I, I totally, I knew what Ed was, where he was going. I'm like, yeah, I see that. I see that. Um, you know, there was, there was a day that I was walking into my office and God has had me in the season of, I'm the financial coordinator at our church. That just means I count the offering and I may pay the bills, but it, you know, sounds good, financial coordinator. But there's all this passion. I'm like, I'm sitting in an office and I don't even get to see like, a lot of people, and I want to be up, you know, I need to be traveling more, I need to do this. I'm walking in after making the deposit one day, and I was just giving God some advice, you know, and I'm like, you know, God, you're, you're kind of wasting me here in this office. Like, I don't even have a window. I can't even look out and pray for somebody walking by. Like, I, I have to, like, have fake paintings of trees on my wall to just feel like I'm outside. So, you know, anytime you want to release me from this, I could do so much more for you. And he asked me this question. He said, when Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, was that any less of a kingdom moment than when he was preaching to 5,000 on the hillside? And I knew it wasn't a trick question. <laughs> and I'm like, no. And he asked me why. And I said, because everything Jesus did was about the kingdom. And he said, so go be about the kingdom. Have those knee-to-knee -knee encounters. Have those. And that's what God's been honing in on you. Um, I see Sabbath coming for you too. I, I, there's just something like, I, y'all are just, you're just willing to jump in. You know, um, one of the churches that my husband and I served at, when, when God moved us out of that church, we had five positions between the two of us with two kids still at home. And I mean, I look back, there's some old Facebook posts and I, it's like my day and I'm like, are you kidding me? What was that? And we burned out. We just did. But we were saying yes to really good stuff. And, you know, with the, one of the times when Sabbath is mentioned, it was related back to creation and that God rested on the seventh day. But the other time, it was related to them being in Egypt. And when they were in Egypt, their value and their worth was based on what they could produce. And God was saying, no, it's not about that. Take a day and delight in knowing that your value and your worth just comes because I created you in my image. And I created you to bear my likeness. And I saw you wanting so desperately to stay in step with the Lord. And there's this picture, I want to, I want to do this with you. Um, come here. Yeah. So you're just kind of like, you just want to be like, God, I just want to go where you go. I want to, I want to follow your leading. I want to, you know, and so if he goes this way, you come. 
And then you're like, you know, and you're just, but there's this thing, like, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss where he's leading. I don't want to, and God's like, that's not the in step that I want with you. It's this. Right? It's this intimacy. And that's what he has with you. And there's no fear now because he's holding you. And he just wants to dance with you and stay in step. You're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it because he's got your heart. And there's going to be times he'll want to slow dance. He's going to want to hold you close. And he's going to say, you know, honey, sometimes we just got to let loose. And, you know, oh, no, come back in here. (laughs) No, let's go, you know. And let's have some fun. But you don't have to worry about missing, missing it. He's got your heart. And let's let him dance with you, okay? Okay, well, if, if uh, you guys know the Ribble story, so so about 10 years ago, they planted a church here. He was the lead pastor. They did everything for that place. He's told me stories of how they had to decide whether or not they were going to pay their water bill or the church's water bill. So this thing called rest for them, it's a timely word. Even now, if you know, Jesse works like 12 jobs, I think, at least can't even count every time I talk to him well we're starting another another business am I right I'm like when do you sleep oh sleep is for it's overrated and we'll sleep some other time you know they've been on staff for a year actually I think next week is their one year anniversary and they came off of a really hard season and they took a sabbatical right before they came on. It, it just the timing is just so interesting how the Lord works. But strategist, playmaker, thinking outside the box, thinking a hundred steps ahead. That's him. And your time is coming. The thing that I, I kept hoping I wasn't going to hear, and I think I heard a hint of it, and it hinted at something that wasn't here and and that was I was like I don't that that can't happen okay that can't happen this is your home this is your ch- and you are I did hear you're a defender of this house and you yes you are so it's th- it's this house okay <laughs> but at the same time I'm like you know what you're too good to keep sometimes so I'm not prophesying that over you. Don't hear me saying that because I want you here forever. But um, spot on again, spot on again, um, everything. And if y'all know him, know this couple, you know everything was right on, right on. Um, the Lord has his hand on you, his mantle, his anointing is on you as not just you, but as a couple, there's a, there, is a, there is a mantle on the two of you that together you're better. Together in ministry, you're a wonderful dynamic duo, as you could say. And you're just getting started. The Lord is just beginning to use you. All the, the last nine years were just training ground for what's coming. And there's much greater things coming, so buckle in, be ready. So Lord, I thank you for the rebels. I thank you for Rev Rib. I thank you for the gifting that he brings. I thank you for the anointing that he has and what he means to this house. And Father, I pray that you just uh, begin to elevate his leadership, elevate uh, his influence. Lord, he's ready, we know. 
And so, Father, as he becomes leader of leaders, Lord, I pray that you would surround him with the right men. Not just men that can help him, but men that will hold his arms up like Aaron and her. They held Moses' arms up when he was weak. And so, Father, I'm praying that for this man right here, that he would have men around him that would be able to hold his arms up when he can't anymore, when, when he's tired, when he's weak, when, when he's at a place where he just doesn't know how to do it anymore. He will have the right men, the right people around him to encourage him along the way. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this couple and what they mean to this place. And Lord, we worship you today. And we say yes and amen to everything that was spoken today in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen. Were y'all encouraged by some of this? I hope you were too. Uh, so now we're just gonna spend just a little time and be patient. I don't know that they'll get to everybody, but you know, it'd be really cool if they did. Um, no, I'm not saying that, but just be ready and just be in a, in a posture of prayer, ready to receive some words. I believe that he does want to tell us something tonight. And so they're just going to walk around with a microphone. They're probably going to ask you what your name is. Stand up, please, as they speak a word over you. All right. And just as a reminder, if one of these things or one of these words that we share, you feel like it connects with your heart, you can steal that. It's a ricochet word, just like, oh, man, that got me too. So you can, you can receive that. I have a word for um, the lady, right? Blue shirt right here. Yes, yes. What's your name? Laura. Laura. Um, the, the Lord showed me that there's been, in the past couple of years, there's been some false accusation against you, that there's been um, a season of hurt that you've walked through and some some things that have happened in your life that have affected you that you didn't cause, but you still walked through it. And there's a specific individual that you've had to navigate a little bit. And the Lord the Lord gave me First Samuel 26 for you, um, and it's the story of David and Saul that Saul was unjustly pursuing David and going after him. And Saul, and David was wanting the best. 1 Samuel 26, David had the opportunity to take Saul out, and he chose not to. It says that David had the opportunity, he was right, and it says he just walked on. And, and I, just, I just saw that, I just heard the Lord say to you, just, just walk on. It, just walk on. You didn't cause it. You didn't make it. Just, just walk on. Let it go. Release it. Just, just walk on. And God's going to bless you because of it. Okay? All right. You're welcome. That's good. Um, this young girl in the blue hoodie. Can I have you? Thank you. Um... Yes. God has his eye on you. And there's a twinkle in it. It's not like, oh, he's watching me. <laughs> you know, he's got a twinkle in his eye. You bring him a lot of joy. Um, is this, who are you? Grandmother. Her grandmother? Okay. I'm her nana. Your Nana. Okay, awesome, awesome. And what's your first name? Riley. Riley, okay. Well, Grandma, I heard this for you. You have, this is your mission. I want you to hone in and drill into her Genesis 1 and 2. A lot of times we start at Genesis 3. We do, don't we? We talk about the fall first. Like, that's one of the first things. You know, at my, my little girl, 
who just had my third grandbaby last week. But when she was three, she could she'd go in. She told her hair, the person cutting her hair, Adam and Eve ate the fruit. No, no. I mean, that was like that's the first thing she heard. And now I wish I had really honed in Genesis one and two, and not spent so much time on Genesis three to start out. Eve probably would have been a lot better off if she had really honed in on Genesis 1 and 2, right? And really knew who she was. And that's what I see with you. Like, that's a role that you have in her. And these two things to pray for her. That she will be overwhelmed with his kindness. Because that's what will always lead her to turn back to him. Even if, you know, she's trying whatever, as we do when we get older, but just overwhelmed with his kindness and overwhelmed with his love because when she is, she just, we love him. Why? Because he first loved us. Parents, can we just all pray that for our kids (laughs) and let him take care of the rest? Overwhelmed with kindness and with his love. Okay. I loved this. I had just written that down, and right at that moment, like you literally, after I wrote it, you reached over and just put your arm around her and gave her a kiss on her cheek, and I'm just, yeah, just do that. Just keep doing that. Overwhelmed with his love and his kindness. Amen. I I have a word for you in the black shirt. Yeah, would you just stand? What's your name? Chad, and then it's the same word for you guys. I just looked over at you that you guys are a couple, right? Yeah, would you? I hope so. All right, uh, go ahead and stand. What, what are your names? Carlton, Carlton, and Kaylee. Um, I have the word, but I just looked over, and the Lord says for you also. And I pressed in a little bit earlier, and and the Lord said, "Well, it's not for you to know. It's it's real simple." And God said, "You know what it means." But I just heard the Lord say, "It's not over." It's not over. That's, that's all I have. I wish I had more to go on, but the Lord said, you know exactly what that means. It's not over, all right? And then I have a word for you guys right here, this couple right here. You two, would you stand? What are your names? Kelsey and Cassandra. Kelsey and Cassandra. The Lord is giving you a creative idea. And you've been um, wrestling with implementation, and when the time is, when is the season? And because you trust God, you love God, you know it's from God, you believe God, and you're like, okay, do we do it now? And I just saw kind of this back and forth. And uh, Ecclesiastes says that if you wait, it's in the, um, it's in the um, uh, message translation, it says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. And so I hear the Lord saying to you, go for it. Go for it right now. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. I've put it in your heart. You don't have to even wonder if it's me. He said, I've put it in you. Go for it now. All right? God bless you. Go ahead and keep standing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I, um, I heard that you guys, Jesus has like literally ruined you for life. Like completely just like... I'm done. And I see like you guys just live in this perpetual honeymoon phase with Jesus. It's just like what he has done in your life, what he has brought you from and brought you through. It's like, I don't, I I can't like this is so fresh in you all the time. And I saw you laying your hands on other people and praying that they too will have the joy of their salvation restored. That's all. <laughs> I have a word for you. Yeah. Well, tell me your first, tell me your first name again, Miranda. Um, Miranda, I just heard the Lord say, is, is this your husband here? This is him. Um, go ahead and stand if you would. Um, I, I feel this word's both for, for both of you as a couple. I just heard the Lord say, there's more. There, there's more. Um, I hear the Lord saying, you haven't been buried. I've planted you. There's a big difference. And there's a cultivation process that's taking place right now. But sometimes you feel like I've been buried. 
and I, I, I don't see any fruit taking place. I, I, don't, I don't see the results that I want to see. And I just hear the Lord say, no, 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 no. I, I, I've got you planted right where I need you to be. And I'm cultivating the soil around your life. And I know there are seasons of drought. And I know some of those that even wonder, man, Lord, am I just burning up here a little bit? No. He said, no, 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 no. I've got you planted in the right place. I'm cultivating. There's, there's more. Be patient. There's more. I just, man, the, the, I wish I could just verbalize it. There's, there's, there's something that is emerging up out of the soil if you'll just be patient in the process. Trust, I, you know, I just hear the Lord even now saying, trust the process. Trust the process. Okay? All right. All right, the gentleman in the white shirt, yes, with the beard. Yes, I'm looking at you, man. Yeah, you. Yeah, can you stand? What's your name? David Wooler. David, um, I just, God's saying, you are not a disappointment in any way. You are a favored son. He really wants you to hear that. It's time to come into agreement with that, with him. Believe about yourself what he believes about you. And when you do that, it will fully release all that he has stored up for you. He's just waiting to bring it in. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. And then this lovely lady, yes, in your name? Cassie. Cassie. Um, I just saw this tiredness. Um, and I have, I have felt that. He said, tell her what I told you during that time. And it just was, I just was tired, like tired in here. You know what I mean? Like tired in here. And he said, hey, remember, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And I was honest. And I said, yeah, I'm not feeling that. <laughs> I'm just really not. I mean, I get it. I love the concept. And I just, I can't get there. And then he said that in his presence, there's a fullness of joy. And I'm like, okay, that I can maybe work with. Because I needed strength. I just was tired. And I said, well, if that's the case, then how do I get there as quickly as possible? And he said, I will inhabit your praises. I inhabit the praises of my people. And it opened up this whole world of worship and praise and just sitting in his presence and getting this intimacy with him. And it started there. I just started praising. And at first, I didn't even have the strength to do that. I just had to turn on some praise, worship, music, and just sit in it, sit with it, and let it start filling me up and take me into his presence. And there was a fullness of joy that started coming in. And that joy then became my strength. So that's the progression he wanted me to share with you. Yes. I have a word for a guy right here. Yes, sir. What's your name? Philip. How you doing, Philip? Good to see you. You know, Philip, you, there's, you have an entrepreneurial gift. You, um, you're just naturally good at stuff. And... You have, you're one of those guys that a lot of other guys hate because whatever you touch, it just works. It just, it just happens. Um, there, there is a, there, there's a business book that I read a, a while back and, and the Lord prompted me um, to share it with you, but it was a book that the title was What Got You Here Won't Get You There. And you are a gifted man of God who has seen some good success take place around your life. But there is so much more that God wants to do through you. 
And God wants to bless you financially, exponentially. And I even hear the Lord say, I'm going to bless you beyond what you can imagine, but not just for you. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna bless the kingdom. And as, as you move into that new season, what got you here won't get you there. There are some new tools along the way that God is going to put inside your belt going to put around your belt. So there, there's some new things even now that you're learning. And I hear the Lord just saying, be patient because you're going to try things that you used to do before, but they don't work now. It's because you need a new tool. And so as you embrace that, just know, don't, don't get frustrated in the process that embrace it, embrace the new tools. But there, there's a, there's a unique gift on your life for kingdom resources that God's going to use. All right. God bless you. Okay. I'm going to borrow my new friend here. (laughs) I went over, I said, where'd she go? She just stepped out for a minute. But she's back. I'm good. And I said, I'm going to, I need you. All right, so this sweet lady here, what's your name? Lisa. Lisa? Yes. Lisa, I was standing back there um, during worship, and we were getting these words, you know, and just, it's so fun, because you just kind of scan, you're just, like, for me, it's just scan, like, donk, and it's like, okay, we're just going to sit there for a minute and see, and I heard, and it wasn't a ton, but it's pretty good, I heard that he wants to bring a strengthening and a healing for you. Sis, you've not stopped praising him. You, I mean, when they were singing, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice. That's you, sis. You just praise right through the midst of it. And then while we were up there giving words and Ed's like, there's some healing in this one. The Lord said, get it, get her on it, get her on that. So is it okay if she lays hands on you? Can we agree with her? And um, I'm just excited to see what God is going to start. Here we go. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for who you are, God. And we thank you that you have created Lisa, Father, with a plan and a purpose. And that no matter what obstacle that has come in her way, God, that you still have a plan and a purpose for her, Father. Even more so that she has a stronger story to tell of your glory, Father, and how you're working through her in her and through her. And Father, we pray that as she continues to live for you, that you complete her healing, Father, that is a process and you give her the strength to continue that process, Father, and remind her that it is a process and it can be completed through you and with you, Father. I pray that you give her patience, God, to continue to walk in that, Father, and that as she does walk it out, she continues to shine and give you the glory. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Lisa, I want you to read, because did I say this part? I want you to read, what's that say? Strengthens and healing. And what does it become? Testimony. Amen. Amen. Testimony. We're going to wrap up, but I just wanted to take just two seconds and just encourage you. You know, um, people are more desperate than ever to hear the voice of God in their life. As a matter of fact, some of you came in here tonight hoping and praying that God would have a word for you. I've said in services like this when I was a little younger and, and just been in dark moments and said, God, I need to hear something. And I've walked out and I've never got a word. And here's what I want to encourage you and tell you. God can speak to you. God, God has a word for every single one of you. And if you came in tonight with a desperation that said, God, I need to hear your voice tonight. Would you just stand real quick? If that's you, God, I've got to hear you. I'm sunk if I don't get a word from you. I'm going to pray for you because here's what I believe. I believe that from the time we say amen to the time you get ready to go to sleep tonight, that God's going to speak to you. 
that the thing that you've been asking him for and even praying and believing for tonight that you would get a word, that God will say, no, 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 no. I'm going to make it even more special because I'm going to tell you myself directly. I'm going to tell you specifically. And so I just want you to just hold your hands out just like this, and we're just going to receive right now. Jesus, I pray that you would speak. God, speak. Lord, there are those that are standing, they're desperate to hear your voice. God, they want to hear you. And God, I thank you for their faith in reaching out. And I pray, Lord, that even tonight, God, that they would hear a word from you. Lord, some of them are wondering what a next step might be, or they might be wondering about provision, or maybe a word of encouragement related to healing, or Lord, I don't know what that is, but you know, and I pray that tonight you would do what you're so good at, that you would bring encouragement, that you would build them up, Lord. Father, thank you for your word in our life. Thank you, Lord, that it's even such a special word because you're going to choose to speak it directly to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a great night. I'm so encouraged, man. I, I hope that you guys are encouraged too. Thank you guys so much for, for worshiping with us, for being uh, patient with us, and really just being ready to receive whatever God has for us tonight. And I believe that he's going to continue speaking. Just keep saying yes. Keep saying yes to what he has for you. And I believe that he's going to continue to speak. Hey, can we just stand together and let's just pray us out. Father, we thank you for the words that we heard tonight. I pray that they fall on fertile ground. I pray that you would just uh, continue to speak loudly and clearly to your people. Lord, we want to receive all that you have for us. Every single word. We want to just suck the marrow out of every single word that you speak. And so, Father, tonight, we just say thank you for everything that you've spoken already. Lord, I pray that you bless it. I pray that you would, would just, uh, just multiply whatever needs to be multiplied tonight in this place. And I pray a special blessing for each and every individual that's here tonight, especially those that really came wanting to hear a word from you, Lord, speak loudly and clearly tonight. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for loving us. Lord, we love you so much. And we're expectant for what's yet to come. In Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you guys for being here. Hey, let's let's uh, make a plan to be here next Sunday, next Sunday morning, 9 a.m., 1030. God is going to continue to move. I believe that. Love y'all. Have a good night.